Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Let me cut down to the essence and teach y'all some lessons. Unexpected, none contestants, the full court presses. With aggression, y'all get lost in expressions. It's blood curdling, bone rattling, skill shattering. I'm unreal, spitting ill, sounding like a drill battalion. A murder, a group of crows, but you reap what you sow. Mercenaries unrivaled, I bet I won't hear a peep when you show. Hey guys, welcome to the lab. A very, very special episode of Sundays with the Clink Room. We have a very special guest. Casey has joined us. Surprise, everyone. Welcome, Casey. Thanks. Thanks, Leon, for having me. It's been, it's been a long time and um, really, really glad to be back. Yeah. Um, we're here to announce something really, really special. Um, the, the winners of the contest. So can you give us a little bit of details behind that? Yeah, but before I do that, something doesn't quite feel right. Um, <laughs> guys? <laughs> Uh-oh. <laughs> You brought okay. back up. Now, now, now everything feels right. That's right. <laughs> All right, cool. Who, who did you bring with you today? Well, we have we have Blaze and we have Paco, of course, the VP Mercenaries, the guys mm -hmm. that create all of uh, Clink's amazing music. Yes, sir. And um, they're such a, an integral part of what makes Clink special in my mind. Like, just they, they represent all the creativity, the community, the sort of passion that... Um, that I love about, about Clink. So it's really, it's really amazing. Perfect. Uh, they've been great partners with us. Um, they did the Views from the Vault um, theme song and, and all of our videos are powered by BP Merch. So I'm really happy to have them involved. But uh, yeah, let's get into it. So um, we're going to announce two lucky winners. What do they get, Casey? Yeah, so um, when we had the production shut down in um, 2021, um, you know, as a way to say thank you for people that hung in there with us, because it was a long time. Uh, yeah. As a way to say thank you, um, one of the many things we, we, we tried to offer was a, a golden ticket like experience, like an ultimate clink weekend where we would fly a clinker out, uh, you know, give, give them per diem, um, you know, pay for their hotel, you know, take them to all of our favorite places to, uh, you know, drink beer and eat in San Diego, design uh, the hat of their dreams and, um, and, you know, give, you know, send them home with a big old gift basket, all that stuff. You know, um, my hope was to do that <laughs> when we started shipping finally again, when, when, when we started getting hats again, but, you know, running the clink room is, uh, is, is, a, is a complicated animal. And, um, uh, you know, the sheer volume and support that we've gotten for the clink room is, is truly amazing, truly overwhelming, but that comes with its own set of issues. So dealing with things like shipping and all that stuff obviously became a priority customer service. I wanted to prioritize that. That's a long way of saying we're finally ready. We're ready to, <laughs> to drop the, to drop the, um, the golden ticket, you know, dream with clink weekend program. And uh, as a way to say, sorry for taking this on, we're actually going to pick two, two Ooh. winners. And, um, yeah, Are you, should we should we announce who who gets to come? Yeah, let's do it. So um, you've put all the names in a hat. Yes. And uh, Paco yes. is going to pick one, and Blaze is going to pick the other, right? Yeah. So if you purchased a hat during the you know pr previous to the shutdown, any hat that was affected by the sh by the production shutdown, and then you kept all of your pre orders, you were entered into the into the list. Essentially, that's Ooh. it. Yeah, and. Oh. Um, and so we, yeah, that that's it. That's it. If you, if you kept them, then then you're in the you're in the running. That's how you entered. Perfect. All right. Yeah. So you're rewarding loyalty. I love it. Um, yeah. All right. Let's let us let us announce some winners. Our loyalty is, is is always so appreciated. All right. All right. All right. Paco get first. <laughs> let's get it. I have Darius Hanneman. All right, Ooh. Darius. 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 We're going to be emailing you um, with uh, all the information. You can you can reach out to first, but we'll, we'll we'll be emailing you, coordinating that all. Okay. The second winner is Brendan Nolte. Nice, oh, Brendan Nolte. I think I know him too. I definitely know Darius. I think he's a oh, Bay Area right. guy. Right he's a Bay Area guy. Yeah. yeah. Good Baltimore. stuff. Congratulations to you guys both. Um, look out for your email. Right. Hopefully it doesn't land in your spam. Make sure you respond to the email because uh, that's a good we'll, prize. We'll, 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 we'll hand you down. We'll hand you yeah. down. <laughs> yeah. All right. Cool. All right. So congratulations to those guys. Um, and then now first order of business, I guess we'll get into Monday morning crits. 
So you guys will be joining me for that. Thank you for that. So let's pull it up. First off, night and day, Clinker the dude. What do you guys think? Yeah, the, the dude, the dude is a new new entrant to to the Clink um, to the to the Clink designer community, and he, I mean, he's employed what I would uh, um, lovingly call the, uh, <laughs> the 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 net the numbers game strategy. Which is just, mm -hmm. you know, he probably he probably posts, you know, a half dozen to a dozen designs a week now. And look, it's a useful strategy. I think there's a lot of successful clinkers, Gabe, uh, Wind Studios that have done that. And look, man, there's a reason why reps make, you know, good athletes and all that stuff. And 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 going the reps route is is a great way to go. Um, the dude designs, you know, my favorite ones of his are the the simple ones. I'm always down for like the one, two color designs. And I just thought this one was unusual and straightforward. What do you guys think? I love the yin yang, the yin yang vibe for it. Um, I know that's what he's going for. The shaping of it, the colorway. When it first popped up, I was like, oh man. It's one of those ones you don't want to wait for. I love it. I absolutely love it. Yeah, the colors are unusual. I really like this design. So um, a little thing about the dude is he comes from t-shirt design. Mm. So when you looked at like his design, his, uh, the the DJ, the monkey DJ, it was a little too detailed in the embroidery. This is going to embroider well, which is really like the clink ethos mm -hmm. of is it going to embroider? Is it yeah. going to pop? This is going to be incredible, even if it's flat or raised or partially both. It's going to be really good. Could you imagine that embossed? <laughs> oh, that yeah. would be amazing. Some, 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 with a crazy colored thread. Oh my gosh. Uh, I mean, Paco's point about the simplification. I think I think the dude has started to realize that he does need to tone down from exactly. the t-shirts design stuff. Um, the the Clinkroom Studios here are next to the airport in San Diego, so um, <laughs> we call it the Point Loma Pause. If we uh, <laughs> if a big one goes over, but no, but even this one, I would even simplify it more. I mean, uh, you know, uh, if, if this, this one gets drafted into the shop, that would be my first order of business. But even, you know, they, there's what, there's 20 stars on there. If you can get away with seven, you should get away with seven. Right. Um, that's, that's the sort of, that's the sort of, that's a broad criticism of everybody though, frankly. <laughs> Maybe yeah. Turn down the trees. Yeah, uh, just one tree. Maybe, yeah. Even the water. The water, yeah. Water. yeah. But I mean, the, yeah. But it's those are all changes that make the embroidery awesome, but that you really can, can't tell. But yeah, isn't this color scheme unusual? I, thought I really, love, I love the color. Yeah, it's unusual, and it accomplishes a lot with just two colors and a logo. I think it's great. Refreshing. Yeah. But yeah. also, kind of, you look at it when you think about that, the way that orange, or you could say burnt sienna, mm -hmm. even the way that is, it kind of speaks to the night and day concept. Mm. The dark blue. You have a little light blue that goes along with it, and that orange gives you kind of the, the weather or the change of the sun type of thing. I think that's interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This reminds me a little bit of his uh, his other one, right? Beach music. It yeah. was mm -hmm. kind of came in a little bit, um, a little bit crazy with a lot of details, and then when it hit pre order, it was kind of simplified, right? So yeah, you know, yeah. We could tailor the back, but I mean, I think that's a cool lane for him. This sort yeah. of this this sort of flat a lot of shadow, silhouette vibe. I think it's cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. So uh, shout out to the dude. And moving forward, we got the Sphinx, Sierra Gons, my boy out of Toronto. Yeah. Sierra's out of Toronto? Yeah. Really kept mm -hmm. that. I did not know that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I like this hat as soon as he posted it. Yeah, this is this is one that that um, Sierra Gons as, and I have gone back and forth on. So a little behind the scenes, especially if you're a regular – um, either via email or, or text or DMs, you know, I'll, 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 be, I'll work with a lot of our regulars to sort of polish a design. And I think he sent me this concept and it was, it was a lot. <laughs> it was, there was a lot going on and yeah. And I was like, just simplify it, maybe even try to backlight it. I mean, one secret to sort of a complicated design is hide stuff in shadows, right? Yeah. Um, and, and uh, use, use color to simplify too. So the use of the two, sort of burnt oranges, um, really kind of unified things. I mean, it's a really simple color scheme, right? It's basically two colors. Mm -hmm. It's not two colors, it's more than that, but it's just, you you know, you have the mint and the orange. Um, and it, take, it took a complicated logo and made it really simple. But I think he, I think his simplified version is awesome. I agree, I was gonna say. Yeah. 
Point no more. It's so beyond. So I'm telling you. No, I really, I love it. Um, I didn't see him posted before this, so it, this one was a, a first time for me, and it, it's really nice. I like the use of the constellations in the background. Um, again, you know, you, you probably stand for a couple of the stars to go away mm -hmm. just to emphasize the, the constellation. Um, the color scheme. I'm glad you guys brought it up, though. The color scheme is amazing to me. Yeah. Um, I'm a sucker for mints and, and light blues and yeah, things like too. that, especially when it's a, a contrast with colors, you know, with the rest of the colors like that, that, that burnt orange and even the crown just being a navy. That's, that's, that's gorgeous. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. I'd be curious to yeah. see if he plays with uh, glow in the dark in the final product, maybe randomize the stars a little bit. I feel like that's a little bit fun. I'm a pause. I'm a little, uh, no, the glow in the dark could be a good, a good, um, a good thing. You know, I think, um, I've heard a lot of feedback. I think there was an era where we were doing a lot of glow in the dark. Yeah. And I think it's fine ultimately. I mean, you can't really tell when it's not, you know, when it's not glowing. So if you don't, in my opinion, when you if you don't care about glow in the dark, it's like, why not have it in there? But mm -hmm. I think I, I think I heard that criticism. I think um I think we're gonna be more judicious about how we dole it out. I don't think this needs glow personally. Mm -hmm. But no, yeah. it, it it's one of those things where I think glow might Take, away, oh, from take yeah. away from it. The one thing that I really like about this hat is its aspect mm -hmm. of it from the ground looking up yeah. and the depth looking depth. back. Um, I'm a really, I'm a really big fan of this hat. Mm -hmm. So yeah. I have no criticism, whatever. Yeah, that's a great point, Paco. And I think like even you know, I don't even know if there are claws on the Sphinx, but we're we should add claws on this one, right? Done in the that's same color. Okay. That'd be dope. Sure. Yeah. Get that big. Yeah. Those, the, when you have those big open areas like that. It, it gives us an opportunity to to have fun with embroidery. Yeah, the the paws definitely I feel like have to be raised, and then you kind of get that more oh, yeah. more perspective. But they're, they're so bold. I think we could even go more. We could do we could do a paw, or we could do cracks in the rocks or something like that with embroidery. Mm, yeah, yeah. About the, that'd be the raised embroidery. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, I wouldn't be surprised to see this one hit hit. So on Friday, I mean that, so, that brings uh, up a good point, Leon. I mean, I I don't put anything up for crits that I don't at least see some potential in, right? Yeah. Not everybody's totally ready for the shop, but you know, I mean, there's definitely like a show aspect to Monday morning crits. I mean, mm -hmm. I've we've that from people, and it, it was when I heard that from someone, it's like you know, I think I heard that some guy he, he, he like never um, he hadn't even ordered a hat yet, but him and his wife every morning text each other which ones they like. And then they finally won, you know, these guys aren't collectors. Finally, one popped up, right, that they that they loved. And, like, it's their, you know, they both they both wear it. And, but they, it's like a point of conversation on Monday morning, you know, when they're, yep. you know, dragging at the office. And I thought, like, oh, that's a fun way to think of crits is, like, it, it is kind of a show. So, mate, yeah. We so, have that. I was yeah. saying, we have the we we, we have have that I think it's I think it's a common thing. So, yeah, I do try to think about the show aspect of it. And so, but I do all hats I want in the shop. That's let's just that's that's clear. That's yeah. Yeah. All right. Great job, Sierra. Let's see the next one. Swamp Siren by Ryan's Ryan uh, Simmons animation. Yeah, I mean, mm. I think there's been a few designs that have are similar to this, um, but I thought this one is a really unusual take on it. Really mysterious. Um, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I mean, so this is actually another good example of when you're storytelling it, and clink hats are are. They're, you know, they're illustrative logos. They're complicated for the most part. And so when you're going to storytell, if you can hide things, first of all, I think it's more fun. And it, I think it makes the design more unusual. But, you know, Ryan, Ryan is incredible. Ryan, Ryan does a lot of our gifts that you can, um, you can use, that you can use as stickers um, on Instagram. Ryan is a super talented animator. But, um, uh oh, now we have horns back in the background. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know these <laughs> Some of the planes are big enough to set the alarms off. <laughs> Anyways, I, I love this one for the hidden, right? I mean, 90% of the siren is underwater. I think that's such a, a great design trick. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna echo almost everything you said. Everything about it. The, the colorways again. I mean, we have a lot of mints and light I, I'm I'm like the colors. colors. There's a lot, a lot of colors. Um, I think it's also dope because without, you know, a lot of people may not know some of the background stories of what sirens are. And mm -hmm. I think this tells that story without having to read a history book. Um, you know, a lot of the time they show sirens more for the physical aspects of the body and how attractive the body is. But this one being more 
mysterious, almost like a monster coming out of the water, which is a lot of the stories come to that effect. Oh man, I think it's, it's, it's absolutely great. A lot of negative space use, which, oh man, I just, I'm impressed big time. I really, I really like this. This is actually, I'm, I'm not big on sirens or uh, mermaids or things like that. However, this one in particular, I really like this one because uh, going back to the same thing of the Sphinx, I like the aspect of this. Mm. I like the whole, okay, we're halfway submerged and in the back is the tail. I, I think that's fantastic. Also using that moon that way. I mean, Dude. Even if you <laughs> Well, both both, of, both of them have the backlit moon, which I yeah, think is such a great hack. Yeah. Give it, give, it gives it some depth, depth here. So, you know, it's, it doesn't feel like it's just this one singular plane. Very much like you said about the, the, the Sphinx, as far as where you are. You start to look at where you are, where it is, where things are. Yeah. I think it's very, very fresh. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it, to me, it's got some um, aspects of uh, it reminds me of like the Vermont Lake Monsters, kind of the negative yeah. space. You don't mm -hmm. see the full. Um, creature, but you know, you see enough of it to kind of get the the sizing of it. I think that's real cool. I mean, and then it's a continuation of uh, it feels like mint week this week, so everything's got a little bit of mint yes, feel. Yeah, yeah, you're um, right. I never, I, I never noticed that, but there's a lot of similar similar color going on. Yeah. All right. Cool. Good job, Ryan. Let's see this one. Pineapple Express. <laughs> Seamus and Brandon. Yeah, I mean, I mean, Seamus the Skunk has really just become like a dark horse clink designer, in my opinion. I, no I mean, yeah, that. right. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, I remember, I remember him kind of coming in and being. I mean, I think his first few were pretty wacky. And um, look, I, I, I like wild, wild ideas as much as the next guy. But he's 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 refined his storytelling and his his editing choice and names to really come up with some amazing stuff, some stuff that is really surprising. Look, you know, it's, if, if you followed the clink room for any amount of time, you understand there are some genres that, that are hits, skulls, <laughs> skulls, reapers, all that stuff. And, you know, I try to balance it out for the hardcore collectors with the people that are going to first touch clink. Mm -hmm. So, you, you know, we always got to have some skulls and some reapers and stuff in there. But, it, but man, Seamus is dancing to his own songs, man. He's got, I mean, Alpaca, Alpocalypse. Oh, oh my god, god. that was oh, like Instacop. Man. I mean oh, Instacop man. and like one of our best sellers of the, of the whole year. I would like, not wait. But no. but but if you told me that would have hit as hard as it did, I would have been like, no, man. no way. Man. But Apocalypse like, was one of the best sellers. Definitely. Ah, yeah. He's, yeah, he's amazing. yeah, it, it it killed. No, he's he's Seamus is Seamus has cracked the code that amazing. that we're all still trying to figure out. And I think this might be another one in my opinion. I think it's hilarious, it's awesome. I mean, it's so well executed too. Yes, um, it is. Yeah, I like double yeah. entendres that aren't obvious. This is a yeah, yeah, yeah. in that yeah. respect. It's just so <laughs> weird. Right? I just, yeah, it's everything about it. Like you can't even really focus know, on the I name know. to where you're like, yo, it's just serious. <laughs> I love it. I, I shout out. I have nothing else <laughs> except I love it. That's it. <laughs> love so so yeah. Blake's obviously getting this one. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, honestly, I love this design. Um, if you really like and know about the. Clink history, the history of Clink. This fits right, like right there. This is yeah, it, I agree this is really so does. far different, and yet it's in the pocket of Clink. Yes, I this agree. is Seamus is becoming one of my favorite <laughs> designers just yeah. because just because of the ideas that he gets. He executes them so well. Really? He collabs with the people that come up with the ideas. Like this is Love this it. is fantastic. <laughs> the only question that I have, and I wanted to run this by Casey, yeah. is the horse itself. Is that going to embroider well with the de with the fine line details? Def definitely. Okay. It's, this is another one that, like, well, I don't know what you call each of those diamonds on a pineapple. A, a segment. I don't know what you call it, but I I, I would try to reduce it by twenty percent if, yeah. if I had okay. it, or even you know, especially under the shoulder, I would just do that as a whole shadow, maybe even bring the shadow up kind of mid leg on the rider. Some of this outline and the highlight on the front, on the front legs, I would get rid of those. So just minor revisions. Yeah, just little things. So like, so here's, here's, here's actually a good example of, of, a, of a common mistake that looks great on the computer, great on silk screen, but not good in, um, in embroidery. So if, look at the front right leg, right? That's cocked back like that. So it has, 
an orange outline, then there's a yellow space, then a highlight, then yellow. Mm -hmm. So, and what you what you've done is you've given three passes that have to be done in embroidery now. So one trick is to move the white, right? So it goes, it would go orange, yellow, white. One trick would be to move the white against the orange. Now you have two. That's better than the three. Mm -hmm. Even better than moving the white into the orange is to get rid of the orange and just have white. So that whole front part of the leg, I would ditch any gap between the white and I would just basically replace the front orange outline with the light yellow. Yeah. Here we go. <clears throat> and then the, the back legs, you could just maybe shadow them so that they're still there, but get less detail. Yeah, That'd be yeah maybe. Cool, I mean, they're, cool yeah, they're, they're close, but I would even go shadow even more. Yeah, I think it's... Yeah. I think it's that smoke is fantastic. <laughs> That's a little too detailed. Too. A little detail, huh? but, yeah. but but it's but it's well done. It, it, it is well done. really well. Done. Yeah, it's well done. Yeah, I feel like it, it needs to be like a foot or two off the ground if it's in that motion. Yeah, the best nitpicking it a little bit, but he's got a cool style. I think it's a great point, but I mean, so so this is another. I mean, the number one way to get better embroidery is to not have a tall logo. Is to reduce mm. the height of your logo. You know, I'm thinking yeah. about, um, you know, Milo's, there's a, a, shop, a design that's in the shop right now, um, Wizard's Lair. And, you know, it's this really elegant, like beautiful, you know, detailed logo. But, you know, the hat was like, well, the hat was as tall as he wanted the hat to be, which is great. But, you know, I just reduced it by 30% and yeah. instantly I know it's going to embroider better because the hat is actually a very wide canvas. This is a wide logo, so it shouldn't be a problem, but... I think, Leon, your, your point is a good one. It might be more dynamic to have them off the ground more, but then yeah. you run it, you have, to, you have to, you know, you'd have to make it smaller, right? If you make it taller, so. I think so. I think you could play with it, like maybe get it higher and then have the smoke kind of yeah, kind of in, intertwine the design a little bit, but yeah, it's so interesting. Too, yeah. You, yeah, you guys brought so. up. Get the, get the right rear hoof kind of off the ground, but like still intersecting with the smoke or the dust, I should say, yeah. Yeah, and you guys brought up um, a t-shirt design with one of the last ones. This one almost feels like he's he's got it like almost set to like a silk screen. So it's like yeah. layer on top, different color and different on top, different color. So it's interesting. There's not a single piece of black on his design. Now usually no, Chris has people really play interesting, that. right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. What do you guys think about the the walnut the 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 brown the brown crown? I'm totally fine with it because I like the contrast between the yellow, orange, and uh, the two two greens that he's got okay. in there. Like I, I think that's a really good <clears throat> colorway choice because that logo is going to pop against that walnut. I agree, one hundred percent. Okay, yeah. I like it. I know there's, I know there's some pushback with some yellow, yellow unders with some people. They don't yeah. like the way it changes, or they they feel like the com their complexion of the skin doesn't you know, get accented by yellow under. So that's I, one thing. I, I, I really with. agree with that, actually. I, there, there's some light yellows that I won't use that I just refuse to, to use. So I try to go for a darker, like an A gold. I think it's yeah. about as light yellow as I'll go. Um, there's some yellows that showed up that are just way too yellow for me. I mean, I want to wear these hats too. So, so And I agree. That's an interesting point about the reflection. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But yeah, all, all in all, I think this is a, this is a killer. Killer concept. Yeah. Killer I love double entendres. It's, and, it's hilarious. It's so fun. Yeah. 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 All right. Moving forward. We have Bon, bon Voyage by Milos uh, and Creatures uh, of Earth. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is what I'm always I mean, here, Speak of the Devil. Milos comes mm -hmm. in. Creatures of Earth, another another one of those awesome new voices in the, in the clink room that I'm so thrilled to have have a part of the, up in the mix. I mean, Milos is Milos is amazing. He's so talented, and um, really just came out of nowhere. I mean, I think he's out of out of uh, Serbia. Serbia. Serbia, yeah. Yeah, pretty pretty amazing the reach that Clink has had. Um, love having him part of the a part of the community. But yeah, this is I don't know. This is so fun. <laughs> I mean, it's it's very similar to one the the, the Sharon, the one that's in the shop now. Yes, yes. And I was like, oh, should I hold it? Nah, Should I hold it and wait? I was like, I can't wait. <laughs> it's, a, it's just a different vibe. They're very similar. Yeah. This vibe, right. I mean, the color, the color use, obviously the skull and the, yeah. uh, the everything about it just has a different, darker vibe without it being corny or anything like yeah. that. 
the colors that he chose. I mean, everything about it is like a warning. It's it's amazing. It's a very beautiful. Hat. Yeah. We we've seen a lot of ships, and we've mm. seen a lot of ships from the front on perspective. Yeah. However, that skull in the flag <laughs> is it's amazing. Is yeah. unreal. <laughs> it, it is. Just, it makes the whole thing just look haunting. Almost. Yeah. Like right. there's like like you see that coming. Like imagine you're in the water and there's like a little light float or something. And right. you see that coming, you're just you're, you already know it's over. It's, it's, it's a wrap. Right. And and I I really don't have anything bad to say yeah, about phenomenal. this. Just it's a great design. <laughs> this is a take my money. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, run it up. Take my money. <laughs> this is why we're bro. <laughs> this is why I'm bro, bro. This is, this is amazing. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, no, this, this is, is so great. I mean, this actually solves the the height problem and the complexity yeah. problem. Right. So the complexity problem by shooting down the barrel of the gun, right? Mm -hmm. Or down the barrel of the boat. And it, you know, half the boat is hidden, right? Hidden behind the front end of the boat. And then by putting it in sharp perspective, mm -hmm. right? The the mast, the mast would, you know, if it was if it was straight up and down, could be another double the height. Right. But right. he shrunk it by half just by Pushing it back. I mean, yeah, my, my was a, amazing. We've seen a lot of really mm -hmm. good perspective and backlighting at yes, this yeah, week. Yeah, very much so. Yeah. Production question though, Casey. If you were to run this, would you run the black as negative or would you punch it in? I would punch it in. Okay. Yeah. So I'm um, thinking of future future uses because if you leave it yeah. negative and you change the color of the hat, it will totally change the design. One hundred percent. So future future use is my number one. I've also yeah. learned that with these ones that were in question, like where the where the background, the negative space leaks into the hat and there's a little bit of like a fuzzy edge around that. I've learned that it's a storytelling opportunity. So, for instance, you know, keeping the ribs, the, the, the back ribs on the back half of the hat, you know, you mm -hmm. could continue the story of those ribs with black embroidery. Right. So we have yeah. the darker gray, which I think is like a wool, like. Uh, what is it called? Something wool. Anyways, that co that's coming in the background, and then it could continue into the black. You could tell, you know, some you could do some water effects with the black. Um, obviously, all that detail in the rigging and the and the sails. But yeah, that, absolutely. And in the future, if we wanted to do it on a light blue crown, it would be awesome to do a dark blue. You know, all the all the black here could be dark blue. That'd be mm -hmm. awesome. Yeah, yeah, it's cool because. Um, he did have the the other one that went into um, pre-order, uh, Sharon, or um, <clears throat> yeah. that one's more bone color. This one yeah. I could see you using two different metallics: metallic aluminum and metallic silver to mm, kind of really maybe. get that. Depth. I'm pretty hesitant on metallic. It has to really have to like scream. This needs to be metallic in order yeah. to. Be I just think uh, the the real. It's not going against metallic. I love metallic. The first clink mm -hmm. hat ever was metallic. I had metallic. Yeah. So I'm, I'm, I, I love a metallic. It's, when used right, it's great. But on when when you're we're selling renderings, yeah, it's hard to I'm, show. So you know what I mean. We're selling renderings of a hat, and it's so difficult to show. And who knows? Maybe AI will solve this in the next year or something like that. But <laughs> it's so difficult to really depict the way the hat looks. And so I feel like if you're going to give us your hard-earned cash and you're going to wait around for you know the months that it takes to make the damn thing, like. I want to, I don't want any surprises. So, yeah, if, you know what I mean? I would rather, I, would, I don't know. And metallic is a divisive, a divisive thing. So I don't, you know, unless I see metal on something or um, I don't know, there's another reason for it, I'm sure. But yeah. Okay, cool. All right. Great job, Milos and Creaturezoid. Let's see who we got next. And it is Omen by mm. Kyle. Long time clinker. Long time clinker. Oh, Kyle. Yeah, Kyle. Kyle is, is definitely one of my favorite designers that we have. Um, you know, he doesn't submit as often as I'm sure he would want to, or as much as I would want him to. But all of his stuff is so thoughtful and like just perfect for embroidery. I mean, it's so simple. I mean, the little details in this that anyone has ever seen the inside of a of a yes. baseball to me are just so fun. Like the the woven. On the on the forehead yeah. is so rad. The 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 like in the front end that little like scalloped part of the of the 
you know, where the, where the thread was. Yeah. That's yeah. exactly how it is. How it yeah. Yeah. You know, even there's even like a, a remnant yes. of where in the front holes here, mm -hmm. where there's like, where it used to be indented. I'm, I'm going to try to totally bring that out in embroidery, but Kyle, Kyle's amazing. Yeah. I think that, I think this one's great. Also, I think it's one of those things where if you really haven't seen a baseball unraveled, if you haven't seen one torn, it's kind of, it really does speak to pretty much what it looks like having those little extra threads out there. Cause if, again, if you've torn a baseball, yeah. you know, it doesn't you know. care clean. No. It always has a bunch of the colors, colors, right? Too. Yeah. The color. yeah, yeah. Cause you don't get it. You, you get a ball. It, it gets about that bad. Yeah. That's when they start unraveling, tearing up. And yep. Um, this is, this is so dope. Plus, even if you're not really into baseball, you can kind of get that. Yeah. Idea. Like, uh, you know, it's, I don't know. I, I, everything about it. I really like even the, the motion, um, coming off of it on the left side. Yeah. I, you know, I think that's good because you know, then there's a number of implications you can take from the tear and the hit the cover off of it, right? That's so dope. Dope. Very dope. Killed the ball. Dude. Oh, I, I really like this design for all the reasons stated. Um, yeah, you guys pretty much said it all. Uh, I am curious to see what gets raised mm. in this, like. I would definitely, if it were me, I would definitely do raised embroidery on the threads. Yes, sir. Yes. Um, I would probably do mm -hmm. maybe a little bit of raised on uh, the skull itself the uh, skull. and leave the eyes black. Eyes and nose. Leave the negative space black. Yeah. That would be that would be mine. But I would probably do. A little bit higher for the threads and a little bit lower for the face itself. That would be me. <laughs> I can do it. So yeah, that's good. I think yeah, I think to really get this idea that the skull is inside and back, I would probably flatten the skull. Okay. You know, one of the problems with um, raising this type of a logo is the is that 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 big space, the the bottom left side of the ball, is yeah, pretty wide open. Big. And when you're when you're raising a wide open space like that, I wouldn't want it any other way, design any other way. But what we have to do is break it up. So we would have, you know, and we could do that with this. The, the ball is dirty, right? right. Beat right. up. So we could kind of have some jagged texture. But um, but it might make sense to just do the the threads. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and yeah, and maybe just the threads, or maybe you know, when a baseball is embroidered, the leather is like pulled up. Right in those areas, right? Right. So even just the the leather yeah. around it, maybe I don't know. I'll, we'll have to yeah. spend some time with it. But what do you guys think about the gray crown? If I were to say anything can be changed, and I I wouldn't be bothered, it would be the gray crown. Okay. Only because of the, to what know, to what though? That's what I was. That's that's, that's the, the thing. It, that's one of the problems. I was thinking because <laughs> almost the color of the ball itself is a big problem when you yeah. change the color or something kind of tannish brown. Just think of you know like um, the like an infield. Um, something to give that impression. The gray, I mean, the gray doesn't hurt, even if it's like blue, like light blue, like sky. Yeah, that, sky. You know, that might work. Um, I'm not, I'm not against the gray, but I could, I could see another color making that design pop a little more. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I feel like he maybe went for like a like a Terminator theme almost because like the skull oh, looks like I it's kind of like a T. The red laser eyes. Yeah, yeah, that's kind of how I feel. I mean, um, they do have a, one of our grays that, that that we have at our disposal is a dolphin dolphin gray. Mm -hmm. Oh, oh but it's got a little blue to it. Yeah, maybe yeah, that's yeah. maybe that's a middle round. But I kind of like the straightforward, just sort of you know, with yeah. You know, I kind of just like it the way it is. What do you think, Leon? I think I think. Anyone who's played baseball and played baseball with a ball that uh, got abused like this can hear the yes. <laughs> like it just going right oh, by your ear, yes. right? Um, yes. Yeah, like it's it's a really fun design. I I, I think I would maybe make the top if I'm going to be picky, Tucker a little bit just with the wind. Um, mm -hmm. Maybe turn maybe turn the ball into like some type of screamer. I'm thinking kind of like Matt, uh, like a like a rat fink type. Like he hit a screamer. Mm -hmm. Like the, it's just. You know, maybe incorporate the the bottom flap with the bottom of the jaw, maybe. But I think overall, it's like a fun, cool concept. There's nothing really aesthetically wrong with it. But I think I think um, your point is a good one about especially about the top. I think I like that it's just starting to peel back, like yeah. It, so I like that part of it is exposed. I can see from yeah. a distance you not being able to see that there's a skull inside. Yeah. What I really love is this isn't really a design that we've seen a lot of in Clank Hip at. All. Yeah, and that's one no. of the things that really 
lends to Kyle's drawings and yeah. illustrations. A lot of time, like I think of um, his bird one perched on the paintbrush, the one that had all the different colors. So I can't remember the name of it. Painted perch. Painted perch. That was a really fan fantastic design. It was original. Same thing here with Omen. Like that's why I like Kyle's stuff. Yeah. Yeah, his, his, Kyle's is like ready to be embroidered, and um, that's definitely like when we when I'm when I'm I mean I still hand prepare every logo that's in the shop. I go over and clean clean it up. Um, I think it's just it's the first step to good embroidery and um, yeah. giving it a, a good a good advantage. And Kyle, Kyle's is one of those that so little has to be done. It's a real treat. <laughs> Fun fact about Kyle: when the when the big tidal wave of Clint came in the thirty k. Mm. I boxed his order. <laughs> nice. Fun fact nice. about Kyle. Fun, fun fact. Fun fact fun about Kyle. All right. Yeah. You're welcome, Kyle. You're welcome. But uh, all right, man. Good, good, good job, Kyle. This is this is a this is a fun one for sure. I'd love to see it get through. All right. Yeah. Bat ball. I think you're 14. <laughs> yeah, so this this is a new a new new designer that we haven't seen before. Um, you know, this one evokes like sort of classic. Um, retro uh, tattoo flash art yes. and yeah. just sort of maybe a character from a, from a, from a video game like a that we haven't seen. Person. Yeah. Right. <laughs> and obviously it would embroider great. It's super clean, super simple. Um, I don't know. I just thought it was really unusual. I'm always looking for to, to get new designers excited, especially if their stuff is, is great. And um, this one, this one struck me. So. I, I think the only thing I really like the the, the, the image itself. Yeah. Um, I think the only thing that is kind of bothering me is the black crown. Mm. I almost yeah. feel like, and I, and I and I hate doing this. I hate saying, well, I don't like this without being able to say, let's use this instead. But this is that moment where I'm not sure what. But I think there's a ton of different colors that could that would really yeah. make that image pop a little bit. I agree. Um, but the design itself is really cool. It's unusual. Um, and again, you know, in the in the grand scheme of clink designs, it's something that you don't see, you know, so often. Um, I love the little the little fire um, icon right above it. It did remind me kind of of a video game or, or something like that because of that little icon above it. Um, oh, it's yeah. Doom. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, I was gonna say, or I'll, I'll even say, right now I'm playing Diablo, so there's an arrow that goes over the top of the character you're pointing at, and that fire made me think of that for some of the characters and their yeah. uh, their their additions. So. Yeah, I really I like it. Just would love to see a different color for the crown, probably. Yeah, I think I'm the, I'm the same. This really, this to me, it looks almost <laughs> like if I were to take two designer styles, it would almost be a cross of Pink Park and Dion. Good call. Mm. Good like call. it really Good is, um, it, because Di Danny had the bats back in the day, and I think Ink had something very similar to this, but it's not. It's so far removed from this. It just reminds me of a mesh of two styles in particular. Um, again, the only criticism that I would really have, um, and frankly, I'm blind, so I'm looking at the center <laughs> of the eye mm. and where the the reflection in the yeah. pupil is. I that's the first thing that I saw was slightly off. Um, when you say off, you mean you want it centered or something? Uh, a little more, uh, not quite centered, but not quite that far out. It's on the edge of the, it's on it's the, on the edge. edge of the sphere instead of being on the, in the and not necessarily the middle, but just in in the right. Maybe, yeah, I think I think it's a stylized kind of cartoony mm -hmm. reduced okay. version. So mm -hmm. right, you know, this I, I try to resist my impulse to make it make it our style or my style or yeah. Right. This is gonna look. Honestly, this is gonna look good. Incredible embroidery. Embroider. Yes, it's gonna look really good. And it's I, I'm, but I'm also with Blaze. It's the black crown, but I don't know what I would change yeah. it to. Yeah. Not much maybe it. outline it in the magenta, so that it's that all work. kind of blood. That, that might help. Work. Maybe, maybe Something a different works. visor. What do you think, Leon? So, um, Paco, you mentioned um, Dionic Danny and Ink Park. To me, this reminds me of course, like. Classic, classic Mishka NYC. Yeah, so no! yeah so I'm glad you said that because I thought of Mishka as soon as I saw this. Yeah, yeah. so they're they're famous for the off-centered eye. So like yeah. for me, it's like, oh, you kind of have 
I kind of want him to off center, but then like I don't want him to. And Mis- Mis- so Miska's family and and I love yeah. those guys so much. So that's a good point, actually. That yeah. might that yeah. might scare me away from. from <laughs> but but big shout out to fourteen eight. I mean, Very nice. really yeah. really, nice. really glad to have him up in the mix, whether he makes it to the shop or not. I just think he's yeah. it'd be an awesome addition. Okay. Right? Is this his first submission? I think so. I think so. Yeah. If not first. But- the earlier one exactly shout out. Out. Yeah. shout out very nice yeah but i'm with you guys i think it it packing like a big strong outline um yeah. could help it i don't I, there's some people that like really really symmetrical stuff i don't know if i like that or not but it 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 almost is almost too symmetrical yeah but people, i don't know how i would change it on that yeah. would you change the like angle possibly? i was thinking about that like kind of just yeah. tilting it and and, and giving it like giving the wings more depth, maybe. I mean, as a concept, you're right. I mean, there's you know, if Milos did it, for instance, he would have some crazy flying at us, like you right. know, the trailing into perspective, right. blood blasting off the back of it. <laughs> 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 and look, that's amazing. Of course, we love we love that. But I thought there was something sort of like this 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 contrast between cute and evil imagery that right. I thought was fun. yeah. Yeah. yeah, I think that's it's definitely why I, fun. I'm a fan of symmetrical designs in, in general, anyway. Yes, but I think that's yeah. also what makes this one work better as a more symmetrical, straightforward design rather than any other angles. Because it's, it's, I don't want to say it's 2D, but it makes me think of you know kind of yeah, older, it is. Yeah. older video games and yeah. Yeah. You know, stuff like that where we didn't have all the you know the extra perspectives and stuff. So you, the simplicity of it is, I think, also what drives it, makes it you know so so desirable. Yeah. I just really wish we had a different color. I'm just not sure what that color okay. is, but it's a great, great, great design. Yeah. All right. Cool. Good job, Clinker 148. Let's take a look. Uh, put put. JC <laughs> Matt. Oh Jay. <laughs> wow. Jay, Jay's another one of those guys that has really found his lane, I think, in in Clink, like his own. He's he has his own, he's his own Jayness to to all of his submissions. Jay's another one of those guys that I collaborate pretty closely with. He runs ideas past me. I send him ideas, and um, he's a he's just an awesome, awesome, sweet guy and uh, fun to work with. Um, but I think his first submission, he just sketch he sent me of this. It was basically like an entire. Putt putt course. <laughs> oh, 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 I'm, I'm, exa- I'm, exa- I'm exaggerating, and I hope Jay's. <laughs> We're going to have the all over. <laughs> but I was like, reduce it, make it like one fixture, one feature, and uh, and I think he did a great job. My only sort of criticism is like, I think in order for it to read mini golf, I know that mini golf balls are different colors, but I think you got to go all white and all white balls or. Some something it does because it just doesn't read golf right away. Maybe even the maybe there's too much storytelling in the in the, in the club. Um, maybe the club needs to look more just like a straight up golf club. I mean, so often when we're doing these these complicated narrative designs, you have to you have to n- like nail the broad strokes and then mm-hmm. and then you can get funky, right? right. So. Um, you know, yeah, that the, those are my those are my criticisms. I would be like, it has to read instantly. This is golf as mini golf, right? Yeah. And then you can fill in all the amazing storytelling elements and that that yeah, Jay does. I'll, I'll definitely echo the color of the balls because yeah. the, the way it looks is almost like is this are those fireworks? Yeah, is it, uh, you know, is it Christmas bells and right. you know, and, and not that it, I'm not saying that to be <clears> funny <throat> or anything like that. It's just no. not as clear, especially if you're not into mini golf like i don't play mini golf right so i don't know what color the balls are my immediate thought was they're gonna be white like regular balls so i think i think most people would identify that that is a golf ball by it being white yeah um i think the only other thing i noticed is the the outline on some of the and maybe that's a matter of pulling some of that detail out of the top area that outline is on the these small little particles almost of what you know what you could say is either mm. fire or celebration. And yeah. that's what made me go into like, is that fireworks? But the, the, the outline being around it kind of draws you to it. And it looks a little un, un, uncomfortable and easy on my eyes. So I think even if those were removed or the outline was removed from them, that may help me <clears> to, <throat> to be a little cleaner. I do like the idea that there is an outline though, mm. um, just because that brown, I do like the color of the green, but the brown with it and some of the colors that are in the brown or in the yeah, they're gonna kind of you just kind of right. Um, I'm going to give a complete rework idea. 
because I'm, I'm sitting here at a distance and I can't tell exactly what that is. I can't tell if it's a volcano and it's erupting golf balls or anything like that. But when I think of mini golf, I think of putt-putt, I immediately think of windmills. windmills. <laughs> there it is. So if I were to have this design with a windmill and probably maybe a couple of just quick strokes that the windmill is actually turning and then having the balls flying off of the windmill itself would, I mean, people would look at that and go, that's a mini golf. Yeah, I think he went for the. If, I think he went basically for the second most recognizable mini golf. Yeah, game, which is yeah. the tiki. The tiki. Uh, yeah. So, but I'm with you in that when I look at this, I don't immediately think putt putt. I just thought right. it was a cool use of a tiki design. Yeah. Right. But then, so you know, so I, right. I can definitely. I, I agree. It's it, it's a sell. It's how you sell it and how you make it. You know, reference referential to to the story. Yeah, I think I think I think uh, uh, there's um, so many great redesign options with this. I think uh, obviously the windmill is the first one. You know, if I was to tackle this from a minor league as a minor league project, I think I would lean into the idea that you you you, you hit the ball into the object, the character, and then he spits it out. So I think I would have leaned into like a like spitting spitting golf balls out of his mouth. Ah, yeah. Um, Something like that. I, I'm on the fence about the tiki. I think people are more excited to wear a tiki themed thing. Right. Yes, a beach theme, tropical. Yeah. That's that stuff always hits with clink for obvious reasons. Mm -hmm. And more than a windmill, so I, I'm okay with that decision. Um, I think the fusion of the volcano with the tiki mask might not be totally hitting, and maybe elude, maybe just do a tiki with maybe like some palm frond hair or something like that, but he's spitting golf balls. And then oh. in the background, do do like a silhouette of a, of a volcano, something like that. I like that. I like yeah. That I like that too. Um, but I think, yeah, yeah, to sell that story of the thing, I think the golf club also needs to be kind of more prototypical. It looks like an axe right there. Yeah. Well, I can't I tell what it is. Or a cane. Yeah. yeah. When I thought it was an axe, and yeah. I thought he was, you know, he's coming through. Like he's we're, 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 being, we're being hard on Jay, but Jay, I mean, Jay, Jay's incredible. Yeah, I love him. Oh, oh yeah. 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 I mean, one of one of one of our, I mean, one of our biggest hits was this old fashioned snap. I mean, oh, you know, nice. we, oh, have, yeah. we have we have we have more we have more of those coming down the down the pipe for fresh colorways um, this fall, and it, it was a you know yeah old fashioned was a huge hit, and um, Jay, Jay knows what he's doing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it's fun. I'm with Blaze. I'm gonna echo the 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 little strokes on like the particles. Maybe yeah. clean that up a little bit or reduce that. But all in all, it's like a fun design. Um, I would be really interested to see how you kind of tackle the face embroidery. I think of um one of your older projects, uh, the Gwinnett Stripers. How it's kind of built like a sculpture. You know, yeah. the bottom of it is less raised, and then as you get to the top, it's more raised in the face. Um, but yeah, this would this would be really cool for you to kind of. Uh, tackle another option would be um maybe instead of the the golf club if he's part of the the mini golfing part maybe he's got like a piece ripped off of of, of the weather vane or, or um, mm. of, of the windmill mm. um i don't know it's just it, it, it's a cool concept it's where it's like so close i like, know I it's yeah. there. mini it's mini there. golf as a concept is great the like tiki fusion of it is great I mean, this is this another good example too of like reduce the height whenever you possibly can. Ditch the legs; like you don't need them. You can kind of be floating in space, and you would buy yourself, you know, a, a couple an inches, inch, an inch, yeah. half an inch. Right. Um, and I still think it would look great. It would look legs. great. He doesn't oh, need it. Yeah. Legs. Yeah. It doesn't need it. Yeah. All right. Cool. Good job, Jay. And moving forward, we got Tiger Style. Mm, yeah. you bet. I love it. I love it. I got a couple of hype about this. Um, yeah. This one, this one was as soon as it popped up, I was just like, this is amazing. And he did a resubmission too, where he added some hot some highlights in there, the yellow, the yellow backdrop. I think that's a cool, that's a cool trick actually, when you are um going to do a contrasting outline like this yellow on purple right that's i mean those are those are you know complementary colors and so they're going to go really hard one way to 
make the logo feel like it's not a decal, like that it's sort of all a part of the story, is to have, think of the outline as light right. coming behind. And so you see that light like creeping in on the top and stuff like that. Instantly, he's like in space, you know right. what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like instantly, I could see doing this in another colorway on, on dark or dark navy or something like that. And using that mint that we all love, mint mm. back. I'm not saying you should do that. I no, really no. like these colors. Right. But that mint on the top of the leg would look cool, and it would be like a night version instantly. Um, you know, when I when I'm picking the designs, I, I think a lot about the flexibility <laughs> and the future legs uh, that the design could have. So little touches like that from Matthew, and that was a, a, a that was an addition to, uh, to a revision. So awesome. um, yeah, I think it did great. Yeah, I I love it. <laughs> I know it's so simple. Sometimes we, we, we all, you know, sometimes when, when you're looking at stuff, you try to find a bunch of things to say about it, to review it and everything. This is one of like, as soon as I saw it, I was like, oh, man, this is fresh. It's badass. Uh, it's everything about it. I love it. Yeah. I love it. Shout out to Matthew Bell. Very, very, yeah. very dope. Yeah. I, I really like this. I really like this design. Um, I like the color. I like, I like the colorway. I would definitely like to see it in a different colorway. That's just me. But the design itself, I really have nothing bad to say from an aspect of it, from a ratio aspect. Everything seems to be um, in a, I should say, alignment yeah. is the word that I'm looking for. Uh, everything is proportioned correctly. Just a great design. Yeah, if we, if we were to stick with the purple, I think I would opt, I would do like a light purple undervisor or... Uh... A, you know, camel under visors, you know, maybe a darker orange, yeah. something else. I think the yellow on the orange is a tough sell for a lot of people. Um, you know, when we pick colors, we have to, um, it, it's always my preference to not change the color that, that yeah. was played on Monday morning crits, always. But if there's an obvious change or something that I know would just give it a broader appeal, you know, we, we, I'm, I'm gonna. We're gonna do it. We're gonna make that change. Um, but so something like that yellow undervisor, I think. To go back to your point, Leon, I think this one would be an option for that. Um, yeah, I think. I think anytime you have a crazy colors up top, you can just eat, just do a simple. A cheat code is just gray, gray or green, just something yeah. simple. Yeah. Because yeah. that way you're not you're not drawing attention away from the main course, which is up top. Uh, the purple and oranges and the purple and golds makes me think a lot of like Clemson, Tigers University, yeah. uh, LSU, go Tigers. Um, so the question is that I would, that I would have, is this going to fly? I don't know. I think your point about the, about LSU is a good one. LSU, we should LSU. probably stay away from that. Yeah. And yeah. that's why. I was Not that I think this logo has anything. To, like, no, it's, it's completely different. LSU. Yeah. But I think just the association with purple and whatever. And but, and but you know what? Though? Don't don't worry too much about that. <laughs> yeah. let, let us worry about that and navigate I think, that. I, again, I'm still saying I, it's a great design. Yeah. The, the change, even the changes we're talking about, they're they're minor at, at best. I think I'm almost any colorway mm -hmm. with this logo would 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 work. You'd yeah. be able to you'd be able to pull it off no matter what. It's great. Definitely. I think a cool cool thing he can like add on is just make him a little bit more weathered. Maybe give him a scar. Mm -hmm. Maybe some cuts. I'm thinking kind of like Sagat from like uh, um, oh Street Fighter, Street yeah. Fighter, yeah, just like a, give, give him that little bit of uh, weathering, maybe a couple holes in his pants or something. I was you gonna know? say a couple of tears in the in the pants. Yeah. yeah. The other thing is he's got he's got he's got other jungle cats that he could weave into there. Oh jungle. man, I love the theory. Different panthers, jaguars, <laughs> etc. That would fit right in there, and you you've got yourself a whole collection. I love that. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, but overall, like the, great work. The Matt Bell uh, Street Fighter universe. Love it. Mm -hmm. All right. Good job, Matt. Moving forward, what else do we got? We got Land and Sea by Wynn. Yeah, Wynn, I mean, Wynn, again, Wynn Studios, uh, one of those guys that came around maybe a year ago and has, has played that sort of volume game of just of submitting so much. And, um, and it's and, and it's awesome to see all of his iterations. He's not afraid to redo things. He's he's so hardworking. Holy crap, he's really inspiring. But um, he's come so far as a designer. I mean, this is a pretty complicated concept and kind of like done incorrectly could be could be pretty silly. But I just think it's badass. I think oh, he man. yeah yeah. I think I the colors are subdued. Yeah yeah. And and I just think it's such an unusual image, right? 
I mean, it's one of those clink hats. I think the best clink hats are ones where you're wearing them and people are like, what? What is that? Yeah. yeah. And this, this, this hits that. Yeah, I got to echo that. I mean, every, as soon as it popped up, it was, oh, this is amazing. Number one. Number two, I love the colors. Yeah. Um, everything about it, it's, it's aggressive without being too aggressive. Um, you look at it right away, you know what type of animal that is. Right. Um, it gives you some room to really look at it and just look at some of the details, some of the style, the design of it. Everything about it to me is really fresh. And I'm usually a complainer about black and uh, black black crowns only because I have so many. Um, Dude, this ain't black. This is this is navy. Yeah, you're right. But I'm just, yeah. I usually complain yeah. about black, but I could totally see this in black. Oh, in black. Um, I that's what I meant. Right. Like, I, I could totally see it in black. Um, I could see it in so many different colors, especially just because of the colors that he used for the primary image. Um, it's, that's that's a that's a banger for me for sure. Yeah. So here's what I'm going to say about just wind designs in general. A lot of times what gets picked to go to crits after looking at what he does, <clears throat> they're not necessarily my particular favorites that he's done. This is one of them. And I'm going to tell you exactly why it is. Um, he utilizes in a lot of his designs um, that it's almost like, copper and there are two examples mm -hmm. one is never more mm -hmm. that you that couple of runs back mm -hmm. um there is another one and i can't think of it but it is that outlining technique that he has in that color those are some of my mm -hmm. favorite embroidered hats so this one really is right up my alley as far as the logo goes i absolutely love it he's got He's got a couple of other logos um, that come from crits that I really, really, really like. But this one is definitely one of the top ones agreed. that I, yes, agree. Yeah. I, 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 I look at this one and I think about the Clearwater Threshers logo. And mm -hmm. I feel like the eyes and the teeth are begging to be white almost. Mm -hmm. And I feel like the highlights and the base of the color almost should be reversed. So, mm -hmm. if I were to nitpick, Ooh, I can see that. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah. So you're saying a lighter blue uh, base color for the for the shark and the feather, and then darker mm -hmm. blue for the highlights. I think like so. You see the blue that's in the body. I would probably use that maybe a little bit darker and flip the black into that, mm -hmm. and then okay. have that kind of lighter blue in the fill, and then maybe use. The, that kind of copper as the undertone or the highlights and then punch in white for the eyes. Cause I feel like the eyes and the teeth, you're always going to look at that for the shark. Cause that's the most dangerous part. That's so right. I feel like it almost gets lost there, but yeah, that's just me nitpicking. Um, I almost feel like, yeah, like the, the, the color blocking. Is, I think that's is great. A little bit off. I think that's really good feedback. I mean, this, this is a good example of like, should you go more illustrational Mm -hmm. Or should you go more stylized? I think he went really stylized with this. Right. Yeah. Reducing the colors, you know, resisting that urge to, to color everything in as you would think it would be colored. So I kind of appreciate that, but I think your point is a good one. Yeah. As the person who designed the Playwater Threshers logo, I'm going to disagree with you. But... <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. Fair enough. Yeah. No, I, that, that's one of the greatest logos ever. So um, that's, fine. <laughs> that's fine. That's fine. I, th I, I, well, I, to me, like the blocking on that is perfect. So that's, that's why I say I would color it more like that. But, you know, uh, that's me nitpicking. But either way, great job, Lynn. Yeah, great job. Either way, it's going to look great. Is what it is. Just keep that copper outline to it. And that instantly becomes one of my favorite color wins. Yeah, I'm in there. I'm in it's there. really unusual. Yeah. Yeah. I'm in there. Yeah. All right. Cool. So moving forward, who we got next? Oh, last call. That's it. So that was it for Monday Morning Crits. And these end um, tonight at midnight. So you got your last chance um, to get your pre-orders in for these. So any of these designs do you think stick out to you guys as sleepers or must-gets? Because there is going to be regret when the uh, oh, when the oh, stuff lands. Regret. Always. Regret. Right. Um, I think the poison from uh, Jake is definitely one. And again, because I'm blind, um, the deep sea diver with the knife, mm -hmm. those two are my 
those, those would be my standouts. Yeah, I like the I like the I like the um, isn't it Medusa? Yes, um, yes, yes. I, I always, and I'm not a big I'm usually not a big fan of the um, glow in the dark because I never have on a hat in the dark. Mm-hmm. Um, but <laughs> but it, it, the the idea is so dope and the execution yeah. of it is so dope. That's the one I think is just just out there like a banger. Um, the the poison is still fantastic. I think I I, I might have caught that like the moment it hit. That's a win. That's a yeah. win studio. Yeah, it's, yeah. It's amazing. Oh, it's a win. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. I think the Jake is almost the one in the middle on the bottom. Or, that's Gabe. That's oh, Gabe. Gabe. Yeah, you're right. And so you're Again, gonna... I can't freaking see. So <laughs> you're pretty tiny yeah. eyes. Yeah. You're smaller. Yeah. Uh, you're smaller. So, yeah, I think uh, those those two, at least for me, um, and the one we just mentioned by Gabe at the bottom in the brown, I think that one was the one that I was on the fence about. And I have a few hours, uh, you know, tomorrow, obviously, and, you know, hopefully I'll, I'll, I won't be sitting in regret. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think, I mean, again, everything that hits the shop, I, I love and I'm excited for or have an idea for embroidery or, or whatever it is. Um, I mean, for, for space pirates, like the idea of embroidering all that black inside the helmet is really exciting. Yeah. Um, like really getting to see like the, you know, the, 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 the skull cast in shadow. Obviously, the seduction one, like I'm, I'm going to take a really a long time with that one to make sure that that executes well but it's a really conceptual hat right i mean mm-hmm. it's a woman just a woman's head on the side of, side of a hat it's also like very asymmetrical which yeah. i think is unusual yeah. yes. and then yeah. on top of that it's a one color and it's this crazy reveal mm-hmm. so yeah i mean this is a great example of milo's just like getting super ambitious and i love that when again when i saw this one i'm like dude you've improved like this is this is crazy how good this is I think this is even like a third or fourth iteration of the concept. It is, yeah. And just sort of like his ability to hammer and just like work, like just work. Um, yeah, I mean, COD uh, and Creature Zoid with the sea cadavers, I think is fantastic. That's one oh, of those yeah. that pitched me on the side and I instantly was like, oh, I'm gonna add that to the queue. <laughs> um, Gabe's, this was awesome. I mean, color scheme is super unusual. Yes. Yes. Um, and I love how he subtly sort of like there's the skull in there, but it's like it does it doesn't hit you right away, right? It's like it's like a little bit of a slow burn, a little slow reveal. Um, and then of course Magnus Patrick is one of my favorite um, clinkers to work with. He's so freaking talented. He's one of the he's a great follow on Instagram if you haven't. An amazing yeah, muralist, he is. an amazing illustrator, and um, I just love a, 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 I love a Japanese sort of inspired uh, hat. So. Magnus is definitely a Merck's favorite. And yeah. going going back to uh, the Space Pirates, it's one of those that when you look at the mock-up and it's going to be, oh, this is plain. But if you look at like a lot of quote-unquote plain designs, and uh, we were actually just talking about this earlier today, like, for example, Gabe's Trunk Sluggers and Bearcat Dingers, mm-hmm. and I'll add a third in there, and that's Phoenix Feather mm-hmm. from yeah. Early 2.0. Yeah. What you can do with just... Plain color embroidery is can make the whole. It, it can change the whole perception of a hat from mock-up to mm-hmm. actual physical product in your hand. And people are going to look at it and say, "Oh my god, why didn't I get that?" It's because you didn't see past the mock-up itself. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. That's yeah. Fantastic. For me, for me, the sleeper um, of the pack is the red crowns. Um, that one to me is yeah. kind of like that crossover because it's got the Hat Club Fuji colorway, gray, black, pink yes. under, and um, this one actually ties back more to Japanese culture. It's 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 got a, a crane in it, so yeah, um, I think that's a really really well executed kind of crossover hat for anyone who likes to collect licensed product and collect uh, clink. Um, one of my favorite uh, hats out of that pack is the uh, Justin mask. So it's not even a, a licensed product. So this one, if you if you have and collect Hat Club hats, um, that one could be a good uh, supplementary piece to your collection. I think. Yeah, this Great this brand. colorway, especially with the Japanese themed and use of the cherry blossom and use of all that stuff, is one of my my personal favorite um, colorways. I, I I really love that. All right, perfect. So that brings us to the end. Thank you, gentlemen, for joining me for Sundays with the Clink Room. Um, this is a new feature on the channel. I'm really, really excited to get this going, um, bring on future, you know, future. But um, yeah, thank you guys for joining us.
Yeah, thanks so much. Yeah, thanks so much, Leon. Really excited for this. And um, I know I've got big plans for, for us to collab together. And I can't wait. It's going to be awesome. All right, perfect. And uh, for the Mercs back there, where can they find you guys and your work? Instagram, at BP Mercenaries. BP Mercenaries.bandcamp.com. Streaming everywhere from Apple Music to Spotify. Just look us up. BP for Blaze and Paco, Mercenaries. Perfect. And make sure you guys are subscribing to the channel. Um, like the video, comment. Let us know your favorites from Monday Morning Crits. And uh, until next time, we're signing out, guys. Stay fitted. Yes, sir. Peace. <laughs>